This PowerPoint presentation entitled Style in Painting looks at a number of examples of how style has developed in the Western tradition of painting. Slide two. We can see the two basic stylistic categories in Western art, Apollonian and Dionysian. The Apollonian uh, category of style results in classical art, an art of order, harmony, balance, objective, impersonal, permanence, and is also associated with structures of power in the art and architecture of Western art. By contrast, the Dionysian category of style in Western art results in such uh, stylistic movements as Romanticism, the Baroque, is characterized by dynamic, restless, intuitive, expressive, irregular, self-expressive and individual modes of uh, visual um, representation. So we're going to just first of all look at an example of Apollonian or classical style. This is the Venus de Milo, Greek 5th century BC. And you will see that this is an art of order, balance and harmony. And there is a classical serpentine contraposto movement going down through the figure. So you can the, the figure that also describes a shallow arc to the left and then that is counterbalanced and counterposed by a corresponding shallow arc to the right. And it's this contraposto movement that gives this uh, work of art its sense of balance and moreover harmony. This classical impulse in art continues throughout uh, the, the long tradition of Western art and is to be found in all centuries, including the 20th century. And here we have an example of 20th century, late 20th century British um, painting by the British artist Ewan Uglo. And again, because of the composition, the, the balance and harmony in the positioning of the figure, we can see an art of order, balance and harmony. Um, the, the figure is situated in a very um, ordered fashion. Uh, there is a sym symmetry in the figure and also the artist's um, sense of personal expression is subordinated to the classical idea of an objective view, that is to say the artist wanting to communicate exactly what his perceptions were telling him. Now, by contrast, the Dionysian uh, category of style in art can be seen in this uh, classical Greek sculpture, the Laocon, um, and the movement in this figure is very dynamic. It's also really quite complex. The contraposto movement is still there, but it is offset against the counter movement of the right leg, which is acting as a anchor point for the composition. And then the rhythms of the serpentine movement of Laocon are echoed in the circular forms made by his two sons. And the whole restless energy of this sculpture is accentuated by the serpent, which is writhing around through space around this uh, sculptural group. Now this impulse in art towards uh, dynamism, restlessness, can also be found in later centuries. Here we have a painting by El Greco, the Annunciation, which is a 
Baroque painting from 1609, where you see this sense of restlessness continuing through the rhythms in the painting. Figures at the top, again, these circular contraposto movements echoed in the, in the cloud and continued down into the two figures. And the, the painting is also Dionysian in its expression of uh, a personal um, individual temperament. Um, and again, a, a good example of that is the way the artist creates these very strong contrasts of light and shadow making for a drama. And that leads us into the next slide, uh, where again, this sense of the dramatic is rele relevant and appears in contemporary art. Here we have the contemporary British artist, Chris Ophelia, and a photograph of his installation, The Upper Room, which is a series of uh, 13 canvas paintings uh, arranged in a purpose-built space. And the uh, painting is called The Upper Room as a reference to the uh, Christian uh, biblical subject of the Supper at Emmaus. And instead of the 12 apostles, the canvases each represent uh, rhesus maquette mon monkeys. And uh, the, the room is created to obviously give a very effective experience of um, uh, a, a religious um, of a religious nature. Another contemporary artist, again dealing with the same subject matter as El Greco, you will remember the Annunciation, is the contemporary artist G uh, Gerhard Richter, and uh, the Annunciation is here treated quite differently. Although the artist is using Baroque forms within the painting, the artist is filtering the image, it's, it's, a, it's a painting, is filtering this painted image through the lens of photography um, with um, blurring, um, depth of field, um, lack of focus, all the elements that you find in photography. And the painting whilst referring to a Baroque religious subject is um, announcing itself as a contemporary painting. However, there is not the expressionistic uh, element that we find in the El Greco. Instead, in the Gerhard Richter, all personal expression is basically distanced because of this filter of the photographic, the reference to the photographic in the painting. Something similar may be found in the work of Nicholas Wyatt, contemporary British artist, in which the, the photographic um, is used once again in the subject of the Annunciation. In this case, it's a Los Angeles apartment and the scene is taken from a, uh, a film, a Hollywood film, but the, 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 the photographic language is in this case juxtaposed with the, the painterly express, expression that you find in El Greco's Annunciation. Moving on to another aspect of style, we see here a work by a German Romantic artist Caspar David Friedrich called The Wreck of the Hope. And this was a key romantic image in the sense that it basically represents the impotence of man in the face of nature. Now, the reading of this image is uh, a new, essentially, approach by the artist to represent a religious view of the world, not through the omnipotence of God and man's subordination to God, as in the El Greco, but the uh, omnipotence of nature and man's subordination to the natural world. Man is rendered helpless 
in this um, uh, in, in the in the in the in the in the, in the uh, against the forces of nature. This came to be known as the pathetic fallacy. However, the vestiges, the last vestiges of religious iconography or even uh, religious reference in painting started to disappear as we go into the 19th century and visual representation and style can be much more focused on the individual perceptions of the artist and the viewer. That's to say their senses, their perceptions and the whole issue of phenomenology. So we move to a painting here by the Danish artist Peder Kroyer, painted in the 1870s, where naturalism is very prominent in the way that the, the bush and the light on the grass are all represented in a very naturalistic um, manner. And the artist is again recreating the perceptions that, that, that he is experiencing uh, in, in front of this particular motif. Another artist, again, working in the same vein, not so much naturalism, but in this case, more impressionism, is Joachim Sorolia. Um, this painting from 1910 depicts his wife and two daughters sitting in the garden. And of course, the, the style in this painting originates from the artist's own sense perceptions of the way light and shadow are falling on the subject. So once again, style is seen as uh, something that is uh, conjugated or translated through the, the artist's own sense perceptions. As we move on with the development of style in art, um, the, 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 the paintings that we've been looking at in the last two or three slides all originate from this Dionysian aspect, essentially, uh, one that is focused on, on the importance of the individual and the individual's response to the world, either through their sense perceptions. And in the slides that we're going to look at, this is taken to a much greater degree by not only uh, the art being a result of the individual's sense perceptions, but in, in the case of the next slides, in relation to the individual's own psychic and um, inner psychological uh, responses to the uh, natural world. And the first artist we're going to look at is Vasily Kandinsky. This painting, painted at the beginning of the 20th century entitled Composition, quite clearly demonstrates the Dionysian aspect of restlessness and dynamism in this painting because of the forms it employs and the colours and the general sense of, of movement um, that the painting um, portrays and also the, 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 the sense of the inner world of the artist that is coming into play here. By contrast, the inner world of the artist is interpreted quite differently in a, in a radically different style. In the case of Piet Mondrian, the Dutch abstract artist, who incidentally started his painting career as a figurative artist, producing symbolist landscape painting in the Netherlands. But gradually, he, he, through a, a, a process of a reduction, Mondrian reduced natural appearances to a system of verticals, horizontals, and the three primary colours, red, yellow, and blue. And this is, this is a, a, a painting uh, of a fairly advanced state of the development of his thought um, about painting. This painting was made in the 1920s, and it, 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 it is classical. 
in the sense that you can quite clearly see it's an art of order, balance and harmony. So, so the origins of this abstract art in, in, contra, in contrast to the previous slide, the Vasily Kandinsky, this, this, this form of art has its roots in the classical and the Apollonian. And indeed, Mondrian was, uh, I believe, quoted as, as saying that the, the irregular, the emotional, uh, when, when not, were not the, uh, the, the correct properties of art. The final slide we're going to look at is this painting by Nicholas de Stijl, who was a prominent painter in the School of Paris in the 1940s and 50s. This particular painting from 1956, again, whilst retaining this expressive element of the artist's um, response to the world, uh, quite, quite clearly demonstrates though, a, an order. So in the case of this painting, this, the style is an amalgam of both the Apollonian and the Dionysian. The Apollonian in the sense of the structure of the painting, we still have the vestiges of a landscape structure with figures, the two vertical forms in the painting. But it's also Dionysian in the sense of, first of all, it's, it's very much mediated through the vision of the world that the artist has. So it's predicated on a very personal view by the artist and also in the very personal um, use of colour that de Stahl has uh, chosen to use in this painting. So in summary, style is a, a very important um, aspect of understanding paintings. Style changes according to period, it changes according to different cultures, and it also, uh, in, in the modern era, style is uh, predicated upon the individual artist's style. So it's, uh, style in short is a, is a complex um, term in art, but it's something that uh, needs to be uh, considered when, when not only when you look at art, but when you come to make your own paintings. And the most important way to approach style is probably to look at a individual particular work of art and to just analyze that work of art or to approach it in terms of the, 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 these general stylistic characteristics that I've described in this PowerPoint presentation. That's the end of the presentation. Thank you for your attention.